the trade deadline is long past foot in the NBA, the rumors never end. Yes, we're already getting into the league's draft season, which means it is time to resurrect the Friday rumor-rama. This year's NBA draft is already shaping up to be a bit of a dud. There's Zion Williamson, sure, but after him, it's a weak group and some of the better players, Bull Bull, John T. Porter, Darius Garland, may have actually helped their stock by suffering injuries and getting off the floor for the year. NBA Draft 2019 Big Board, Zion Williamson sits at top rankings, Rui Hachimura sees slight drop but that was the NCAA's regular season. We are just a few days away from the start of the next phase in college player evaluation, the conference and NCAA tournament slate. For a draft that has been underwhelming, there is a chance for a late riser or two. We spoke with a college scout about six players with much at stake heading into the tournament schedule, a chance for disappointing players to rescue their reputations and boost their stock. A good march can do that. Cameron Reddish, F. Duke going back to a 7-for-19 shooting performance against Louisville, Reddish has had an underwhelming month in what has been a mostly underwhelming season. He's probably a top-four pick, with teammates Williamson and RJ. Barrett, plus Murray State guard Yamarant, but only because other top players are injured or underperformed too. So Reddish could drop behind some combination of Jared Culver, Nasser Little, French forward Sekou Dombouya or another late riser who wows scouts in workouts. Still a top 10 player, but a strong finish would give the team drafting him a bit more confidence in the player they're getting. Reddish's big problem has been that he's the third wheel behind Williamson and Barrett, and he's struggled to find his fit. Top 10 picks are not typically 36.2% shooters from the field, after all. But Reddish entered college with enough of a reputation that most scouts are willing to chalk up his poor numbers to a crowded Blue Devil offense. Reddish could still use some redemption, though, and a good Duke run in which he makes some big shots would restore confidence in his game. Scouts view, he's a 6-9 wing who is athletic and can shoot, and you can't just ignore that. He has great tools, but coming into the year, I worried that he was not aggressive enough, and this year has only confirmed that worry about him. I don't think he's going in the top four, I think he's a guy who will slide. Not out of the lottery, but he'll go lower than where is projected now, maybe number 8 or 9. A lot of it depends on how he works out, and for someone who came in with as much hype as him, you don't want to be in a position where you are relying on your workouts to lock down your spot. DeAndre Hunter, E. Virginia Hunter has the rare prospect in this draft who came in with a clear checklist of issues he needed to address and actually checked off those issues. Chief among those was his three-point shooting, and he's been outstanding, making 48.6% on the season. has made NBA personnel types more comfortable with projecting Hunter as a starter in the league, an outstanding wing defender who can switch on to bigger forwards and can knock down perimeter shots when left open. If you're looking for 3 and D in the lottery, Hunter is your man. What's missing from Hunter is more confidence in his 3-point shot, he's taken only 2.4 per game on the season, and as a guard who is not much of a ball handler or playmaker, he needs to be aggressive off catch and shoot opportunities. The Cavaliers need that from him over tournament season. They've won seven straight games, and in that span, Hunter has averaged 18.1 points, up his three-point attempts to 3.1 per game and has made 63.6% of them. Scouts view, there are not a lot of known commodities in this draft, but he is one. He is such a great defender, and that will translate easily to the league. I like his shooting form. He just needs to trust it more, needs to be able to put the ball on the floor to create that extra space and make those shots. He is very reliant on others to set him up. I mean, Clay Thompson was the same way when he first came into the league. I don't think he's going to be Clay, but hey, that's a nice ceiling for him. Eric Paschal, F. Villanova overall, Paschal has been a reliable offensive weapon for the Wildcats, averaging 16.6 points on 45.3% shooting and 36.3% from the three-point line. 
He's had a rough stretch lately, though, averaging 12.0 points with just 34.6% shooting from the field as Villanova lost 3 of 5. Cashel is a 6-8 big man, and like many in this draft, it is a tweener who might struggle to defend the paint but is not athletic enough to guard the perimeter. He has been solid as a defender in college, but there's some question about how that will translate to the NBA. He's already 22, so the prospect that he'll make big strides in the league is dimmer. But Cashel showed his value during last year's tournament season, when he shot 48.3% from the three-point line in nine games and had 24 points on 10 for 11 shooting in the semifinal win over Kansas. He's a fringe first-rounder now, and another big march could push him to the top 30. Scouts view, he's a rotation player, and if you're picking late in the first round, he's a guy who could help you right away. He's got a ceiling because he's not much of a shot creator and isn't particularly explosive. But he is a smart player and can find ways to contribute. Rui Hachimura, F. Gonzaga Hachimura is a 21-year-old junior, and it's unlikely that opinions on him will swing wildly in the coming weeks. He's a tweener, but scouts are divided on how he fits into the NBA, even in today's positionless league. He is not a three-point shooter or a ball handler, and he isn't a playmaker, he's had 0 or 1 assist in 15 of Gonzaga's 31 games. He does, however, average 20.6 points on 61.3% shooting from the field, creating havoc in the paint and knocking down mid-range jumpers. He's a good defender, though it's unclear if he can defend out to the perimeter, and he does all this for the no. One team in the nation. And if one criticism he took in his first two collegiate seasons was a lack of aggressiveness, there's no doubt he has addressed it, having taken 12.7 shots per game and 6.0 free throws. Hachimura has been pegged as anything from a top 5 pick to a guy who will go in the 20s. Such is this draft. Teams already have solid, if varied, opinions on his NBA potential, but leading the Bulldogs to the Final Four or deeper would go a long way toward boosting Hachimura into the upper echelons of the draft. Scouts view, there was talk about him being a top three guy, and that just was never gonna happen, so I think you see some people picking apart his game more to prove it. I don't need to see him make a bunch of threes in the tournament, I know that is something he is going to learn or not learn, and nothing I see now is going to change that. But what I think everyone wants to see is him being clear and focused on the defensive end, really use his size and show some smarts in there. You can make his offense work, you can try to teach him to shoot threes, all of that, but what I would want to see is a guy who has gained more defensive understanding over this season. I am still looking for him to prove that, Keldon Johnson, SG, Kentucky Johnson appears to have hit a wall, and his last five games have not been stellar, 11.0 points, 36.4% shooting, 16.7% from the three-point line. For a guy who has been knocked for inconsistency, this is not how you want to close the year. Still, Johnson is a lottery talent with good size for his position, 6-6, six six, a bulldog mentality when it comes to attacking the basket and a very good pull-up game. He's shot 38.4% from the three-point line this season, so this is not a guy who is going to slump his way out of the top 15. Johnson did appear to have top 5 potential earlier in the year, though, and if he can't find a way to recapture his shot as we get into tournament season, he could slip to a mid-first round spot. Scout's view, he looks fatigued to me. He is undersized. He needs to bulk up more, and it looks to me like he just gets some bad ticks in his jumper when he is tired and it costs him. He has a really great, tight stroke on his jumper when he is right, but you can see the elbows flare out a little, things get looser when he is in a bad stretch. That's fatigue. He's a top 15 pick, but he still has a shot to go 6, 7, 8, somewhere in there. Jordan NWORA, F. Louisville NWORA has made enormous strides in his sophomore season, tripling his scoring average to 17.2 points per game and adding 7.7 .7 rebounds. He's shooting 44.6% from the field and 37.0% from the three-point line. 
Louisville had a difficult February, going 2-6, and NWORA was a big part of the problem, as he averaged just 14.3 points on 34.6% shooting. He did flash a preview of this breakout year last summer playing for the Nigerian national team, coached by his father, Alex, and helping to qualify for this year's World Cup, including a 36-point effort in a win over Mali. He's a combo forward who can stretch the floor with his catch-and-shoot ability, and though he is not an elite athlete, he can create shot attempts and is a decent defender. Scouts view, he is raw. I'd like him to go back to school and be a more consistent defender and scorer. He could help himself out a lot. He's no guarantee to even be drafted, let alone go in the second round. But this is not a deep draft, and he could work himself into the first round if he closes strong, shoots it well and gets the team back on track.